I, I work in this space and live and breathe this stuff uh, every day, and yet the examples that Paul and Lucy have shown, and, and other experts who, who know about this, never cease to amaze me. It fascinates me how we can impact people's well-being with this stuff. So, uh, thank you all very much for coming. Um, it means a lot to us and a lot to this project. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the CATCH project, about what we're trying to do, uh, why we're trying to do it, how we're trying to do it, and then I'll go try and go into a little bit more detail about the data itself. So CATCH is all about generating next generation transport data for transport professionals. It's an Innovate UK funded project. Um, it's 2.1 million costs uh, and we're halfway through a two year project plan. We've got 12 partners, uh, many of which are represented here today. So why are we throwing all of these resources at this problem? Well, we set the transport systems catapult, the task, very early on in the project to ask people such as yourselves, local authorities, dozens of transport professionals, what the current status quo was and, and how could it be improved. And it, we found, uh, un probably unsurprisingly to many of you, the travel survey was the predominant way of collecting transport information. Now, they suffer from small samples or short sample periods or recollection error. They're incomplete. They don't have uh, full route information. Those are often supplemented by technological uh, solutions such as automatic traffic counts or automatic number plate recognition systems. But they tend to be single mode. They sample at a fixed place rather than, again, showing the route. <coughs> And then uh, and they don't provide origin and destination data either. So increasingly there are other things. Uh, Lucy has touched on some of them. I won't dwell too much on these, but uh, Oyster, a wonderful example here in London, they have great information about how people flow through the network. But how do people get to the network? Where are they coming from and where are they going to? Strava is coming up with some great data, very detailed routes on where people cycle. But it's a very particular type of cyclist, cycling in a very particular <coughs> type of way, trying to beat their time from last time. Mobile phone operators, great broad coverage, but not so great resolution. Uh, and various other services, but again, kind of locked in single modes. So, uh, Adrian, if we could try and... We should try. So we see that the uh, <coughs> existing status quo is expensive, it's peppered with errors, and it tends to be based on small samples. What we suggest is that a crowdsourced approach that can gather very detailed information about how individuals are moving around, that shows their complete route, that can then be used collated to build a complete picture of how the transport system is operating. What you're seeing here is just 12 people who we, uh, who, whose data we collected very early on in, in, as we were exploring the catch concept. And as you can see, this has now been, uh, this has now been, this data has been processed, and each different colour is a different mode. You can see the routes are very detailed. <coughs> And that's the sort of level of data, the level of granularity that our technology can collect. How does it work? We've developed mobile phone software that automatically calculates the speed, uh, that automatically measures the speed, pattern of movement and location of individuals to work out the mode of transport. And we do that using a mobile phone. All of that happens on the phone itself and they don't have to enter any information. Uh, so if we could, oh, sorry, if we go back to that to the slide deck. Oh, so why would I install that? Crikey, that's getting a lot of detailed information. Great question. We think that the answer lies in giving the user a direct benefit from providing that data. So we've built it into what we call, or we're building it into what we call a living journey planner. In this type of journey planner, the city, citizen installs it. They automatically share the routes that they've taken. 
will then be processing that data to understand how the transport system is operating. And so we can provide better routing to that individual, saving them time and frustration. They'll then hopefully tell their friends, more citizens, more data, better understanding of the transport system, better routing. And a great circular uh, feedback loop. So there are two, we're, we're working on two fronts here. The citizen, we're providing a living journey planner in order to generate the travel behavior data. But really that's just the vehicle. This project, like I said in that first slide, is all about the transport data. So that's why you guys are here today. You're gonna to help us to understand what it is that we need to do with this data. What, they, what, what do we demand of the data? And how can it help solve problems? And not just transport problems. Uh, as Paul said, often you collect data that can reveal solutions in other parts which you didn't initially expect it to. And as transport cuts across everything that we as people do and our communities do, we think that it can help solve problems uh, across the local authority functions. So let me try very briefly to tell you about uh, the catch data. It goes through this sort of process. We first capture the data on, on phones, all automatic. Uh, from that, we get a rough, uh, an approximate route. We infer the mode, we know time of day, uh, time of journey, the distance uh, and duration. We then collate it on our servers. And then we work on those individual, so all of the individual's data's uh, data is synced up onto our servers, and we work on their individual traces. We apply algorithms and machine learning to fit those, uh, fit that data to the transport infrastructure, giving us much better granularity on the routes. We can fit it to actual services like the 1530 train to Waterloo. And so start to, get, start to build a really accurate pe uh, picture of how people are using the transport system. And then the next crucial step is to then aggregate it. So what I mean by that isn't just collect it all together, there you go, massive big data set, but to try and, draw, try and shift the focus from how the individuals are travelling around to how is the transport system operating. Where's the congestion? <coughs> What's the flow like? And by doing that, we anonymize the data. It's, ne it's now no longer, it will no longer be possible once we've aggregated the data to pick out an individual trace because it's not based on individual traces anymore. And it's that data which we hope, that data that we hope to power insights to share with local authorities and transport operators. So where have we got to now, halfway through the project? We've talked a lot, of, we, we've mentioned the app a number of times. The app is the vehicle. It will always be a journey planner. Um, we've started off, we've got a live journey planner, we'll share the link with you today to download from the Play Store. It's only available on Android at the moment. It'll be on iOS later in the year. Uh, at the moment, it's a very simple journey planner, deliberately simple. We've tried to give, rather, uh, we've, City Map has shown to great effect that by providing information in a very easily accessible way, you can get very fast user adoption. So while we don't have, we haven't yet built that feedback loop, we think we've got a useful journey plan. So the data we can already start to capture on phones. We're working with our university partners and the uh, uh, transport systems catapult to enhance that data, fill in that granularity. And then with our university partners, uh, we are working hard to aggregate the data and draw out the insights. And that's why we've involved you in this process now, because we don't want to go off and build these insights without having learned from you guys what we need to, what, what the problems are that we need to address. So if I can hand over to my colleague Zach to try and demonstrate a little bit more, we, we're going to try and ask you to take a bit of a leap of imagination with us here, because while we've got those individual level traces, we haven't yet built those, we haven't uh, built the processes to aggregate it. And so we don't, we only have the first bits to show you, 
And we're going to have to ask you to take that leap of imagination to what the aggregated data might hold, the insights that it might hold. So um, crowdsourcing might be considered to be a bit like Heineken, reaching the paths that other data gathering processes can't reach. So if you look at somewhere like um, London, um, Oyster and the CCTV network is, is prolific in being able to capture what it can do within the responsibility of TFL. But traffic moves in and out of that. And, and that's the opportunity with crowdsourcing and you know, mobile phones. 81% of the UK population has a smartphone now. And those limitations mean, or, or, or lack of limitations, mean that you can find yourself in, in situations where, where we were able to modestly help out uh, Newcastle with their Cycling City Ambition Fund bid, when through our WeCycle crowdsourcing project, we already had data for that area. And they themselves didn't have time to commission or the opportunity in terms of cost uh, to de gather that data, but we are already able to uh, show resolution where you could see the desire lines that people were taking within the city centres across the park. Uh, and again, that is the opportunity that comes from, from the crowdsourcing. And with the WeCycle project, it was about engaging the people and making sure that they understood that their data that, that we were helping or they were helping us together was going to be used to solve a transport problem. And, and that for us has always been a, a, a key thing about the mission is making sure that people understand how you're going to use the data. And then you find yourself in, in curious and funny situations where because you have this mechanism from gathering data, you're finding data coming in from pockets like Mongolia, the Arctic Circle and Hawaii. But it just, it's, it, that, that's the opportunity of crowdsourcing is that you don't really have the limitations because of the, the way the mechanism works. And so if we're looking here at a, at a user, um, we have the, the routes that they take, we, we have the, the times that they're traveling, the, uh, the, the destinations, but we're moving outside of the typical origin destination um, sort of, shall we say, uh, paradigm. And, you know, we often talk about life is about the journey and not the destination, yet the transport industry, the data that is collected, is about the destination rather than the journeys everyone are taking, which which is quite the paradox or irony. Um, here, we're able to show how a user has particular patterns that are going throughout the day um, in terms of when they might travel and the different modes. And because we don't ask people to interact to gather the data, it means that you know, one day becomes one week, becomes one month, and you start to capture information that has seasonality in it. And so you can also look at um, uh, someone's uh, a variation in their behavior through the week and when they travel. Is someone really consistent in, in their uh, peak and off-peak behavior? And so it's, it's about um, the timings uh, and the, 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 rather than the start and the end, <coughs> you can capture mode switches, um, you're looking at the, uh, the routes rather than the origin destination uh, matrices. You're, you're, you're moving from weeks and months and interseasonality. And you're capturing private and public modes of transport because people don't think about the borders of a county or a municipality. They don't think about a particular mode of transport. Their only thing is just trying to get from A to B. And, and again, they have their smartphone on them. So it becomes a wonderful big for capturing that data, especially if you're communicating that to them. And so it's about mechanized and human power transports, walking. You know, we all know that walking and cycling are not picked up and represented when it comes to the data sets around transport. And it's not necessarily a fair capture substitute, but when you start thinking about travel demand surveys, the cost, the time, and the effort, they can very much complement it. And, and we also think that when you look at how uh, things like revenue distribution work, those are also, when you speak to transport professionals, very much a finger in the air type. So, I hope that gives you a glimpse of the data and, and what, what we're trying to achieve with it. Throughout the day, Zach and I will be around, and there are also partners, the university partners here, that will try to help explain a little bit more if you have specific questions. What we're here to do today is really look at that final piece. What do you guys need from the data, and what insights do you want to draw out of it? What can help you uh, in, in your functions across local authorities. We've got representatives here which aren't transport planners, deliberately aren't the transport operators. We've got those guys as well, big contingent of those guys of course, but we think that transport 
has the opportunity to uh, that transport information has the opportunity to improve lives and communities uh, through other functions as well. So it's back to those three objectives again, uh, for those key key outcomes that we were talking about at the very start. <coughs> what value can the data uh, collected bring to local authorities, and which roles, not just transport, can uh, benefit from that data? Of course, the app is key because that's our vehicle to generating the data. What we're not asking you to do today is think about a, an idea for an app. No, the app is the journey plan. But we need to get that out into the hands of as many people as possible. What levers could you pull? And then what are the key next steps that we need to do over the next uh, days, weeks and months? So, I hope I haven't gone too far over, Adrian. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>